Well, hello, good people. Eber here from Hard Rock and Ucks, and this is... Uh, Mike is here too this time, again. He's, he's back. 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 So today we are going to be discussing about the best and worst PC hardware of 2019. But what was 2019 for you like, Mike? Was it better this year compared to last year in terms of PC hardware? From a PC hardware perspective, because I do a lot of the benchmarking, I think it was a great year. It was the year that AMD came back. They were already back. But this year, they just put the screws to Intel, and Intel had absolutely nothing to respond with. And of course, we do have a lot more items to discuss, so let's go over them right after a quick message from our sponsor. The Sound Blaster X3 is the USB DAC I've been waiting for that brings a fantastic audio experience to your desk with a clean mic input and powerful headphone amplifier. It connects via Type-C and brings a new Super X5 sound profile that beautifully recreates multi-channel speaker setup for movies at an affordable price. Now, with that out of the way, I did want to mention something very quickly. We haven't reviewed every single item that's on the table or that we're going to feature within this video. But we've used every single one of them extensively, either in builds or personal systems. So I think that gives us a little bit of a different perspective. So let's start with the first thing. And for me, that is really third gen Threadripper. And yes, Zen 2 has been rolling out throughout the course of the year, but I'm going to say exactly what I said in that video or in that review video. And that is Threadripper 3 was the icing on AMD's Zen 2 cake. It was offering amazing performance. Intel doesn't have anything that they can respond with for the foreseeable future. It offers high IPC, high clock speeds, everything that AMD needed to be completely dominant in the consumer CPU market. Yeah, it, it was just amazing to see the performance, uh, especially compared to what they were able to do with uh, the 3960X and the 3970X compared to the previous generation WX series chips and the massive leap in productivity benchmarks and all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm still blown away by the performance of it. But it's I think crazy. I think that's another thing that that we should bring up too is last year when the WX series was around, they had some issues due to Windows. But now Windows, to a certain extent, right. has improved itself. Absolutely. And AMD has also improved their own architecture. So both the OS and the CPUs are talking to each other better, and the result is just amazing. So my first pick for the best PC hardware in 2019. Uh, actually ties in again for AMD because it's an AMD year. They have been they've been they've been killing it this year. It's the Ryzen 3000 series and the whole family. I'm going to start with the uh, budget and stuff, the 3600, the 3600X, and what they were able to offer. And then we kind of slowly moved into the 3900X, which was the 12-core processor that blew my mind. And of course, we have to talk about the Ryzen 9 3950X because 16 cores. 32 threads, I mean, it was it's the first AIM4 processor with that many cores, and I personally built myself an ITX rig, and it's flying, like, performance is just off the charts. It's crazy. I can't believe how AMD was able to cram all that power into uh, a fairly power efficient package. And the temperatures were mind blowing too. Yeah, and I think one of the biggest things for AMD is how they were able to preempt what Intel was doing with their own HEDT processors, right? Like, I mean, the 10980XE wasn't a bad processor by any stretch of the imagination. It was just thoroughly outgunned by something that was less expensive on a cheaper platform and to a certain extent on a better platform too than Intel's own high end desktop. All right. Uh... How do I want to approach this? Because I have it here, and if I knock this over, I'm completely knackered. But I was just blown away by when he presented it to me for the first time. So I just... What? The motherboard. Oh, yeah. Well, now you've just... I've killed it, right? Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. So I think this is not necessarily the best piece of hardware in the world. But it's more a representation of what a company can do when they just throw everything at the wall, including the kitchen sink. So this right here is... The TRX40 Aorus Extreme, and it's a Threadripper motherboard. It's XL ATX, and it is just balls to the wall crazy. Now, what I wanted to show you first of all is the fact that they actually they properly spaced their PCIe Gen 4 slots. There's enough room for four double slot graphics cards without too much of a problem. And not only that, is every single one of the connectors is at a right angle on the side. Yes, that's gonna take up a ton of space in your case, but heck, if it's XLATX, you know what you're getting into. The other thing is this that comes with it, and it's a, not a graphics card. Oh, I thought it was a graphics this card. This is not a graphics card. It's actually built better than most graphics cards. I wish it was wow. because it's single Super slot. Slim. What this is, is a PCIe Gen 4 by 16 card that has 
four Gen 4 NVMe SSDs in there. It is absolutely nuts. And we are gonna be posting some video about this very, very soon. My second pick for the best PC hardware is actually a memory kit from Corsair. It's the Dominator Platinum RGB. It's the one that was released this year. It's the all matte black version. It comes with the Capalix LEDs that looks gorgeous. I mean, you guys were talking about it. I think that, that basically took away the whole portion of the video, uh, which was insane. But I love those RAM sticks. I mean, the, the finish, the performance, I mean, the fact that you can get a 32 gigabyte kit or even a 64 gigabyte kit and get it as far as 3600 megahertz is really, really good. So overall, fantastic kit. Highly recommended for someone who's looking to build a kick-ass gaming PC. Yeah, and it's not, like a lot of these things, it's not the cheapest. It's not the but cheapest. But it yeah. really made an impression on us, and I think that's the important thing here. Speaking of something not being the cheapest, but at the same time providing good value, I wanted to talk very, very quickly about one of my other picks, and that's the GTX 1660 Ti. And to another extent, the 1660 Super. Neither of those is the cheapest GPU that NVIDIA has. But at the same time, when the 1660 Ti first came out, the bang for buck it provided was excellent, excellent, especially in a market, or at least an NVIDIA product stack that was dominated by overpriced RTX cards with features that a lot of people just weren't gonna use. Now, the 1660 Super came out and it provided about the same amount of performance as the TI at a lower price point. I think it's at about 250 bucks right now. And for me, when it comes to building an affordable gaming PC, something that's under $1,000, or in this case, maybe even under $750, maximizing the GPU performance is the way to go and these allow you to do it without completely breaking the bank. I think it was also the time when NVIDIA's NVENC technology became a big thing where if you had a 1660 Ti and if you're a streamer, you would actually be perfectly fine using that GPU instead of relying on ray tracing because you don't really need ray tracing to stream. But um, that was really cool to see that uh, come into action. My third pick for the best PC hardware of 2019 goes to an NVMe drive, and it's actually my current workstation PC. It's the Sabrent one terabyte Gen 4 NVMe drive. This drive is crazy. I mean, I ran a Crystal Desk benchmark this morning, and guess how fast the read speeds were? Five gigabytes per second read and write speeds, as you can see by the screenshot. It is wicked fast. Pretty sure it's faster than what's available on the Mac Pro, but nonetheless, oh. what, Low Listen, blow. <laughs> it's, it is what it is, but this is what's, this is an additional accessory that comes with the drive, and that's the heatsink. It looks like a CPU cooler, but if you think of the analogy, it comes with copper heat pipes, it's got an aluminum heat, heat sink. This is the most craziest, but the most unique, innovative piece of tech or engineering that I've ever seen for an SSD. My last award for best hardware isn't really a award at all. It's more like that kid in class who gets the participation award, you know, for showing up and for just completing the test. So that goes to the RX 5700 series. And I, I don't know if Eber agrees with me on this, but they were certainly not the best out there. And they aren't the flagship GPUs a lot of AMD fans were hoping for. But they provided a glimpse into what Navi can provide or what it should provide as it cascades down through the AMD lineup. Now, that gives me a lot of hope, but at the same time, limitations with the seven nanometer manufacturing process and how quickly they could get out chips really put a damper for me on that launch. There was a lot of potential, but AMD just missed the final landing on it. Now with, with that transition of the participation award, let's go towards some of the hardware that we didn't quite appreciate this year. And let's be honest here, this was a great year for hardware and we didn't review a ton of items, but these are more things that we found could use some improvement or just came out at the wrong price or at the wrong time or just with like a weird set of features. So I'm gonna let Ebert kick this one off. I think the first or my first pick for the worst hardware of 2019 is Ryzen 3000 in the notebook space. Oh. I remember taking a look at the Asus Zephyrus GA502DU. It came with a Ryzen 5 3750H. It was a four core, eight thread processor, but it just, couldn't deliver compared to what Intel had to offer in the notebook space. And this is notebook that we're talking particularly, not with desktop. But on the positive side, these CPUs were actually power efficient. I mean, the battery life that I was able to get with that notebook was a lot higher compared to some of the notebooks from Intel. So I guess that's a good thing, but performance just didn't really do that great. But I think that also shows that Intel has been focusing so much on their mobile and notebook side 
AMD usually cascades down their architectures after the desktop, desktop. side, whereas Intel does it completely, completely differently. Yeah. Now, Zen 2, I think, has amazing potential on the notebook side. Absolutely. And I think both of us, we can't, we can't wait to see that. Yeah, I can't wait to see that. Oh, now we, now I start beating we, the shit out of We somebody. get to throw someone else under the All bus. All right, this is, that this, this will be thrown under the bus and we will back up the bus over this one. <laughs> and this right here is the 9900KS. And for me, this is probably the most pointless processor that came across my desk this year. The reason for that is that we've got a pretty good 9900K and it boosts to some extremely high clock speeds on a normal basis. This processor could not keep up with that at its default settings. And overclocking, well, you know what? It couldn't overclock as far as our 9900K either. So for me, this was almost Intel being the AMD of two years ago, just launching a processor in a desperate, desperate attempt to remain in the new cycle. Mm. And to me, that is the worst possible way to approach a product. All right, so my pick for the worst PC hardware of 2019, you guys knew it. I'm pretty sure you probably know it. It's Ice Lake. But let's kick things off with the naming strategy. It is absolutely the worst possible implementation from Intel. And we're throwing them under the bus again. They just didn't deliver the performance that they needed to on some of these notebooks. I think a great example of that would be the Blade 13 Stealth with the GTX 1650 Max-Q GPU. Razer really wasn't transparent about the TDP on the i7 processor on that laptop, but at the end of the day, it just, it just didn't deliver, at least compared to what Whiskey Lake had to offer. So yeah, it's just, it's a complete no-go and I think they could do a little better. I'm probably gonna have to challenge Eber a little bit on that one because we just recently uploaded a video pairing up Ice Lake with an external GPU dock. And Ice Lake overperformed above and beyond my expectations. But again, that is in a very, very narrow area of people who's, who are gonna buy a thin and light notebook yeah. and then hook that up to an external GPU dock. Well, so there is a glimmer of hope on the horizon. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, does, it just doesn't make any sense because you now have Comet Lake, Ice Lake, if people are shopping for a notebook, they wouldn't even know what the difference is between a Comet Lake processor and an Ice Lake processor. This is an average person that we're talking about, not this tech enthusiast like, well, like it's ourselves. It's so frustrating for us. Exactly. I'm gonna transition back to AMD. Uh -oh. Because we have to remember that in 2019, AMD also launched a little GPU called the Radeon 7. And I think the Radeon 7 is in a lot of ways comparable to the 9900KS. Mm -hmm. It was launched in order for them to stay in the news cycle, to have something out when everybody was talking about NVIDIA, NVIDIA, NVIDIA. I can't say that it's the worst GPU for everybody because for people who were using compute, it ended up being, bang for buck, an amazing, amazing solution. But at the same time, on the gaming side, mm. they released it, it was supported for a little while, and then they discontinued it. <laughs> like six months later. <laughs> like, <laughs> Which is crazy. Like six months later, but in, in, to a certain extent, that was understandable because here came Navi, which ended up beating it like a lazy donkey. But this still remains a very valid solution for people who need compute. If you can but, find one. But, but unfortunately, it was marketed yeah. to gamers, yeah. where it wasn't a gaming card. Maybe that's my problem with it. I think I'm gonna double down on that too to bring this into the equation. And this is the 5500 XT. And I, I'm so sorry, AMD, to be ragging on you about this one, but this goes to prove that there aren't a lot of bad products. There's just bad pricing. And I think what AMD had to do with this is they brought it out at such a time when Navi's still in short supply, so they have to charge a little bit of a premium for it. The only thing is with the RX 580 still on the market and they still haven't been able to sell through the stocks of that card, well, you have an eight gigabyte card that's more affordable and more capable than the 5500 XT. And yes, we, we still haven't reviewed it. We're still waiting for an eight gig card. But from what I've seen so far, it's just not a great solution. And unfortunately, Navi hasn't been able to roll out at the speed or at the price that we were hoping it to be. So here's hoping that in 2020, we see a real top to bottom Navi lineup at really, really competitive prices. And hopefully by that point, they'll have sold through their old GPUs too. Well guys, that pretty much wraps up our best and worst PC hardware for 2019. Let us know what you think about it in the comments. In fact, do you agree with our picks or not? I'm curious to know. And if we've missed anything, I'm also curious to know about that as well. Yeah, and speaking of missing, in 2020, Hardware Canucks is gonna be going a lot further back to our roots and covering a lot more PC hardware. 
This year we are a little bit slim on that side, but we're going to be really picking it up in 2020. Mm -hmm. And hopefully our, uh, our top picks for 2020 are going to be a lot wider than this. And if you're interested in us covering a particular category, let us know in the comments down below. It doesn't have to be PC hardware in general, but anything else, um, we're more than happy to take a look at it. So I'm Mike signing off and wishing everybody a happy and safe holidays and a Merry Christmas. Me too. I'm Eber with Hyrule Canucks. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next one. In the next one or, or next year. Next year. Yeah. Uh, depends on when this video comes out, but maybe yeah. at CES. Maybe see at CES. Yeah. Take care.